Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ken Goldberg. So we keep seeing all of these headlines that are saying that robots and artificial intelligence are going to steal all of our jobs. And I want us to ask a question this morning. I want to, I want to ask, is AI really a threat? Or could we see it as an opportunity? So I grew up in, in the town of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the home of Bethlehem Steel, where my father worked, most of my friends' parents worked. And in the 60s, I watched as technologies came in, there were new technologies emerging that, that changed the steel. And the steel, the company couldn't adapt. So over time, they started letting people go, people started struggling, and eventually Bethlehem Steel went bankrupt. Now, the, this was a, a terrible decline. I had to watch it with my, my entire city went downhill. And today, this is playing out in towns all across America, in fact, all across the world. People are struggling, they're losing their jobs, there's a lot of in inequity, and the technology of our time, the technology today, is this new wave of auto artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence, is, this new wave is due to three factors. One, massive amounts of data are now available. Number two, that there's huge amounts of computing to be able to crunch on this data. And number three, there's a number of new algorithms that are able to process this, to learn, to recognize patterns, and be able to predict events in the future. And some are saying that this actually could lead to a hypothetical transition point where robots suddenly become so intelligent and artificial intelligence starts to take over and actually surpasses humans, leaving us essentially with nothing to do, taking all of our jobs. And this is what we, is causing a huge amount of anxiety all across the, the country and around the world. Now, I've been studying robots and artificial intelligence for about 35 years. And as I, today, I run a laboratory at UC Berkeley where we study robots. We try to develop them, and we take advantage of these new advances in artificial intelligence to do what we call cloud robotics, where we're using massive amounts of data, computing, and machine learning to help robots do things better. But I don't believe that robots are going to take over, or that they're any kind of a threat. And here's why. Let's look at the biggest result in artificial intelligence today. This is the, the result that a computer made by Google and designed by Google has beaten the world champion at the game of Go. This created headlines all over the world, and it was a significant breakthrough. But uh, what's important to keep in mind is that this is a game. You're playing on a game board, and everything is in nice black and white, very well defined. The real world, where we all live, where we have our jobs, isn't like that. It's very messy and complex and high dimensional. So if we want robots that are gonna be able to drive cars or help senior citizens or work in complex warehouses and factories or work in operating rooms, things are far more complex. So I want to make this important distinction between the results that we're seeing sometimes in, in games, which are, which are significant, which are interesting, but that doesn't mean that we're suddenly going to be able to solve all the world's problems with AI and robotics. So rather than this idea of the singularity, this point when robots are going to take over, I want to offer an alternative. And I call this multiplicity. Now, multiplicity is where AI helps diverse groups of people work together in new ways. And it's, 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 it, one way to think of it is that it's taking AI and combining it with IA, intelligence amplification. So we want to amplify our abilities and our, our, our ability to work together in new ways. Now, it's based on an insight that comes from the foundations of artificial intelligence. There's a technique that's known as decision trees. And decision tree is a way of taking a bunch of data and then tuning the tree to be able to process new data and be able to make decisions from it. And it's very effective. It's been used for many years. 
But about 20 years ago, a group at UC Berkeley figured out that if you take not just one tree, but you take a collection of trees, and you train them all, but slightly differently, and then combine the results at the end, they'll perform better than any single tree. So the key idea here is that each of the trees has to be different. There has to be a diversity in the forest of trees. So if you have just the same trees, it doesn't work. But when you have a diversity of trees, you actually get provably better results than you get with a single tree. This idea is really interesting because it's saying that diversity is very powerful. It actually helps us get better results. And similar things have been shown recently for collections of people. So there are new experiments that have come out showing that if you take a group of people who are all very similar, homogeneous, and, they, and try and solve problems or innovate, they, do, they perform reasonably well. But if you can get a diverse group where there's a lot of differences of opinions, they almost always perform significantly better. And the reason is that what you want is different forms of intelligence to be in the mix. So essentially, you have, some people have analytic intelligence, some have logical intelligence, some have musical intelligence. And what we want to do is start thinking about adding artificial intelligence into this mix. So using it, not seeing it as something in opposition to us, but seeing it as something that can essentially enhance our diversity and our ability to work together. Now, this is not science fiction or some sort of strange prediction distant in the future. This is something that's happening all the time right now. So every time you type in a keyword onto Google, and it seems like magic that it pops up the, the results that you often want. Well, what's going on underneath the, behind the scenes there is that Google is actually employing something very similar to random forests. There's many different algorithms, many different methods that are operating to compute on the data that it has. And it's constantly collecting new data from humans. So we are constantly feeding algorithms at Google to be able to give us these results. So this is an example of multiplicity in action. And the same things, the similar ideas, are happening to recommend books and songs and news feeds and products to us. It's this combination of enhancing our ability to work together in new ways. So I've been writing articles trying to make the case that it's not us versus the machine, that this is some kind of dangerous threat to us, but actually the machine, the artificial intelligence, has the potential to help us work together in new ways, to be able to amplify our diversity and our different dimensions of intelligence. And we should consider artificial intelligence as just one more dimension. Now there's a precedent when Technology had a huge benefit for society. And let's go back 100 years. And the technology at that time, the, the issue there was that most people were working on farms. And the new technology at that time was steam engines, combines. It started to come into farms. And people started to realize that that was going to change the amount of jobs, the amount of work that was available on farms. So in 1910, only 10% of Americans completed high school because most of them worked on farms. But as they realized that there were going to be these changes, as the technology was going to come in and change this, a group of educators got together and they said, we need to start thinking about having training a future generation in a new way. So they started something called the high school movement. And they built high schools all across America. And they developed new curriculum. And they made a new push to have people, have students stay in school and graduate. And it was incredibly successful, because by 1950, 80% of Americans graduated high school. And the benefits of this are tremendous. We've seen this. It then led to the advances in the GI Bill and college education and many of the benefits that we experience and enjoy today. Now, I have to tell you, Bethlehem also figured this out. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, invested in its schools, in its technology, in its infrastructure, and, and, and links, highways linking it to other cities. And today, Bethlehem is a thriving metropolis. So rather than the fear of this singularity that's going to some way take over and steal our jobs and, and, and essentially oppress us, I want us to consider the possibility of starting a multiplicity movement. So let's think about how multiplicity can change the way we 
and think and learn. So instead of the old school ideas of conformity, where school is where you learn to follow rules and everything is about learning specific directions and um, being obedient, we should start to transform our schools and our education to the new generation, where we have computers, but they use them to enhance our diversity, our abilities to work together, and our creativity, the things that make us uniquely human. So we can start emphasizing like, examples like this, where these girls from Pakistan formed a robotics team and, for, and came to the United States to compete. These are ways of bringing people together and diverse groups to think in new ways, to experiment, to explore, to be creative, to innovate. This has a huge, enormous potential. So let's together start a multiplicity movement to facilitate the future for all of us. Thank you.